Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. My name is Mr. Zavron Ernest. I teach at Alimuntas in Islamic Seminary, Girls Wink. All right, so welcome back to where we ended. For those who are just joining me is that uh, I have already released uh, the video on how to uh, just the video guide on how to do the questions on a homework number one. So if you have not uh, watched that video, please go back to the assignments and take a good look on uh, uh, the quick video on homework number one, especially on how to answer all these questions. Okay, all these questions were discussed in the previous video. Okay, now today I'll be taking you through uh, homework number two, which is uh, coming from course book eight, page 133, exercise 13.2. So there we go. So I asked my students to do question number 4A from this course book eight. And this was the question. The question says, complete this table for the equation. We are given the equation here. We are given the equation here and we are supposed to complete this uh, table. So this is the equation. This is the equation which we are supposed to use. This is the equation here. Y equals to 20 minus 10X. And we are supposed to use this equation to fill uh, this table. All right, so there we go. All right, so I'm gonna start with uh, this value of X. The value of X here is negative two. So we are supposed to substitute x equal to negative two in this equation here. We're supposed to substitute it there and then find the value of y. So how do we do that? We're gonna write y equals to 20 minus 10 x, 10 x. In between 10 and x, there is a hidden multiplication sign. So you're gonna do 10 times the value of x, but the value of x is negative two. So we're gonna do like that. So y equals to 20, you can see this negative times negative makes positive, and 10 times two is 20. So you can see that y will be equal to 40. So here you go ahead, go ahead filling the value of y is 40. So you write here 40. Okay, over here, there is nothing to complete. It's already completed. And then you do, uh, the value of y, you have to work out the value of y given that x is zero. So you take this value of x, substitute it here. So this will be y equals to 20 minus 10 x, means 10 times x. But what is the value of x? The value of x is zero, so times zero. Now, any number times zero equals zero, right? So you're gonna have y equals to 20 minus 10 times zero is zero. and and a number minus zero equals that number. So when when x when x is zero, when x is zero, we got the value of y. So y is 20. Okay. So when you come here, there is nothing to complete. So that is done. So we are going to continue with the next part. And this is to find the value of y when x is two, right? So you can pause this video and take the note of all of this. Otherwise, let me delete everything and work out the value of y when x is positive two. So you go ahead, you go back here. This is y equals to 20 minus 10 x. And then you work out the value of y, which will be 20 minus 10 times x. But this time x is two. So you put here x is two, and then you go ahead filling that. This will be 20, you minus with 10 times two, this is 20. So 20 minus 20, the value of y will be zero. So you can see that the value of y is zero when x is two. How about this one? You can pause the video and try to work out the value of y when x is three. But otherwise, let us proceed. So there we go. So we have, we have x is three. So come back here on this equation, which is y equals to 20 minus 10x. And then you do y equals to 20 
minus 10 times x. But this time your x is three. So go ahead writing three over there. This will be y equals to 20 minus 10 times three is 30. When you subtract 20, when you do this calculation, 20 minus 30, the answer is negative 10. So this will be negative 10, okay? So here you write negative 10, that is correct. Now, uh, how do we move from here? We go to part B, we go to part B, part B is saying, uh, draw a graph of y equals to 20 minus 10x. Draw the graph of this equation. Draw the graph of this equation here, okay? So the equation which we have, uh, we have computed its table value. So we're gonna use this table value, we're gonna use this table value, transfer the numbers from the table value to the graph paper. So over here, we're gonna need the graph paper. So you go and grab your graph paper and then you're good to continue, right? So uh, you get a graph paper like this. The graph paper should have uh, uh, the maximum number on Y should be 40 and the minimum number on Y should be negative, negative 20. Can you see that? So I have got my graph paper over here. This is the graph paper which I'm going to use, okay? Uh, plotting these values of, uh, plotting these values which have been uh, completed in a table value, okay? So you take your, I try to copy this table, put it there, and then we are good to continue, all right? So uh, we are going to use this table. We are going to use this table here. Let's put it somewhere here. Good, so we're gonna use this table here to draw the graph. Okay. This is the table which you are going to use. This is the table which you're going to use, okay? Now, how do we use that? It's simple, just take your pencil and put labels or put some marks. We have negative two, we have X negative two, Y 40. This means that uh, the coordinates on this point here will be x is negative two, x is negative two, put a comma and y is 40. So this is the way how we, this is the way how we read uh, these numbers from the table. So x is negative two, put a comma, y is 40. So you go ahead filling where is negative two, this is negative two and where is 40. Uh, let me move this one over here try to move this one aside. So you have negative two. So you have negative two comma 40. So negative two comma 40 is somewhere here. Negative two comma 40 is somewhere here. Put a dot over here. See, this is your negative two comma 40. Okay. How about negative one comma 30? This is negative one comma 30. Where is negative one comma 30? So this is negative one, negative one is here, 30 is somewhere there. So you go ahead putting a dot over here. So this is, this is negative one for 30, okay? Right, so you can just post the video and try to move on with different other values from the table. So we have zero, we have zero comma 20. This is zero comma 20, meaning X is zero, Y is 20. So this is the way how we write them. So like as I said, like as I said in my previous video, I said that if you have got zero comma 20, so cross out this zero, what you're gonna remain is 20 and this 20 belongs to Y. So you're gonna go ahead on the Y axis and see where Y, uh, where y equals to 20, this is where I put a mark straight here on this point. This is your Y equal to 20, okay? Right, so that is y equal to 20. How about one comma 10? How about this one? One comma 10, you have one there comma 10. So same thing, I'm gonna put a dot on one comma 10. So one is here, this is 10, like this. See that, that is your one comma 10. How about two comma zero? This is two, this is two comma zero. You see, this is two comma zero. 
So go, go ahead canceling this zero. What you are going to remain is X is two. So go ahead checking where X is two. You check on the X axis. This is X is two. You put the dot over there. Okay, uh, then uh, we have three comma negative 10. We have three comma negative 10. So three is here. Three is here. Negative 10 is somewhere down there. So put a dot over here. See that? Okay, and then last three, we have four comma negative 20. We have four comma negative 20. Four comma negative 20 will be somewhere here. Will be somewhere there. Okay. And then what is remaining is to draw what we call a graph, all right? So like as I said in class, that a graph is a straight line. A graph is a straight line in your level. When we say a graph, we mean a straight line. So you take your ruler, take your ruler, and then connect. You have to connect those points, okay? So you have to take your ruler and then connect those points, right? So there we go. Uh, so check your ruler and then connect all those points you see there, right? So we're gonna connect those points as follows, okay? So take your ruler and connect these points, right? So put your ruler somewhere there and then connect all these points like this, you see that? This is what we call a graph. This is what we call a graph. You see that? And then try to adjust your try to adjust your line so that it cuts all the points. Now, what if what if we have like two points? What if we have like two points which do not lie, which do not lie on that line? What if you have got a point which do not lie on that point? So a point or some few points which are not which are not on a straight line so those few points which are not on a straight line we usually we ignore them okay but if your table is completed correctly you find that all of the points will lie on a straight line and the straight line you see there is what we call a graph and go ahead labeling this graph the graph is labeled by using the equation given. The graph is, is labeled by using the equation given. So you label y equals to 10 minus, I mean, y equals to 20 minus 10x. So here you label uh, y, y equals to 20 minus 10x, all right? So if you like that, try to adjust this like so, and then I put it somewhere here to show that this labeling should happen along the line itself, okay? So like that, yeah. I think that is more clear. So you have labeled your line, which is y equals to 20 minus 10x. So y equals to 20 minus 10x, that is your graph, right? So I hope that is clear. Now you can pause this video or play this video many times and then get a better understanding on how to complete a table and hence, how do we transfer the values from the table values? How do we transfer those values from the table onto a graph paper? This is the way how we do. And once you do that, you have to label the graph, right? So uh, let us proceed with the next question. The next question says, uh, seven comma C is on the line. You are, you are given a point here. You are given this point seven, comma C, let me try to write properly. Okay, you are given seven comma C, you are given seven comma C. This is a point which lies on this line, which lies on the line Y equals to 20 minus 10 X. Okay, so this is a point, this is a point which is on the line y equals to 20 minus 10 x. The question is find the value of c. Okay, we want to find the value of c. What we do, we substitute this point, this value, the first number you see, the first number seven you see, 
belongs to X and the, the second value which you see here, and unfortunately this is letter C, which is the, which is the letter whose value has to be found. So this letter C belongs to Y, Y seven belongs to X, okay? So in short, take this point seven comma C and substitute it in this equation. Substitute the point seven comma C, seven comma C in the given question. But the question is how do we substitute? Okay, the question is how do we substitute? So that is the question which I'm here to answer. So how do we substitute that point in this equation? So the first thing you do, the first thing you do is to copy the equation y equals to 20 minus 10x, okay? And then you substitute this point in this equation, how? So you copy this, you copy that point here, seven comma c. Okay. Now, how do we substitute this? In place of x, you write seven. In place of x, you'll be writing seven. And in place of y, you'll be writing c. You see that? And the way how we work out the value of c. So you substitute the given point, you substitute the given point into the given equation. So there we go. In place of y, you write c. So you're gonna write c equals to 20. Go ahead, subtracting with 10 times. There is a hidden multiplication sign there. So this will be 10 times the value of x. The value of x is seven, all right? So you get a simple equation like this, which will give you c equals to 20 minus 10 times seven, that gives you 70. Okay, when you subtract that, C will be negative 20, uh, 20 minus 70, this will be negative 50. Okay, All right, so this is the value of C. So go ahead checking your work. If your work is correct, it should be giving you the value of C equals to negative 50, right? All right, so far so good. So you can post this video and try to go through uh, this solution and see if what you have done previously matches to what exactly I have done now, right? Otherwise, let us proceed. So there we go. We have this question here. This question is similar to the question that we have just finished. Okay, there are a few differences here. All right, so uh, negative four comma D, negative four comma D is on the line Y equals to 20 minus 10 X. Can you please find, can you please find the value of D? All right, so there we go. We have, the first thing you have to do is to copy the equation Y equals to 20 minus 10 X. And then after copying the equation, what we do, we substitute that point in the given equation. Now the question is, the question remains to be, how do we substitute this point? How do we substitute this point into this equation? So go ahead copying that point. Go ahead copying this point like so, negative four comma D. And then where there is Y, where there is Y, you'll be writing D because any number after a comma, any number after a comma belongs to Y and any number before a comma belongs to X. So where there is the X, where there is X, you'll be writing negative four. See that? Right, so there we go. So we have where there is Y, where there is Y will be writing D, and that is what we are supposed to look for. So D will be equal to 20 uh, minus 10 times X. What is your X here? Your X is negative four. So this will be D equals to 20. And then you do the simple working. This is negative times negative is positive 10 times four, 10 times four is 40 and then work out. How did I get this positive? Is because of these two signs are getting multiplied. When the two negative signs are getting multiplied, the output will be positive. So negative times negative gives you positive. And then you end up getting a very, simple question which is d equals to 20 times four i mean 20 plus 40 that gives you 60 right so try to compare your work and my working and then if they're if they're matching exactly put a tick over there otherwise this is the end of homework number two
All right, this is the end of homework number two. Let me try to check. Oh, do I still have, uh, do I still have time? Oh, let me see. Okay, good. Let us try to push more, like do some more questions from homework number. Yes, we have homework number three. Let me try to see if we can do some few questions from this homework number three and uh, see how we can push it on. Okay, this is, this is, uh, this is uh, homework number three, which comes from course book eight, pages 136 and page, I mean, pages 136 and 137, and it is exercise 13.4. Uh, this homework number three is uh, all about the graphs uh, in our in our daily lives. Okay, real life, real life graphs. Okay, so let us see if we can be able to answer some few questions from here. Okay, uh, we have two people here. One is Zalika, and another one is Tanisha. They are cycling on the same route. On the same route, that means they are going to the same destination. Okay. They started somewhere from here. You see, they started somewhere from this point here. Let me try to level. Okay, so this is uh, this is Tanesha. I mean, this is Tanesha. Yes, this is Tanesha. Can you see the this route? Let me try to highlight uh, with different colors. Okay. Oh, uh, so there we go. This is Tanesha, who is starting from this point and is going all the way up. You see that? Right? And then we have, that's Tanesha, and then we have Zalika. So let us try to change color to show the difference in, in, in two routes. This is Zalika, who is starting at this point. Okay, it's starting at that point, going all the way up. You see that? Okay, now you can see the routes clear all right so what is the question we have we have to check this on the y axis can you see the y axis over here this is the y axis alongside the y axis shows the distance covered okay and along x axis shows the time the time the, the, the time is you these people, these two people are cycling. So the alongside the x-axis shows time, and this time is red. This time is red from 24 hour clock. We have 12 hour clock and we have 24 hour clock. So this time is recorded from 24 hour clock. Okay, now let us see the question. We have already identified the route for Zalika and we have identified the route for Tanesha. Okay, now let us see the questions. What are the questions? The questions are Zalika. Zalika started at 900. Zalika, this is the root of Zalika. Can you see this blue color? That is stands for Zalika. Now Zalika started at this time. Zalika started at 900. Okay. What time did the Tanesha start? Or Tanesha started at this time here. So here you write, what time did Tanesha start? So you simply write, Tanesha started at, a, so you can write a few sentences, yeah? That Tanesha, Tanesha, Tanesha started, I'm sorry for my handwriting, but try to accept this. Tanesha started at, a, at a 0930, okay? So Tanesha started at this time. Okay, so far so good. So this was the easy question. Huh? Zalika started at 09. Okay, what time did Tanesha? Tanesha started at 0930. You are done. Okay, you are done. How far did Zalika? How far? When they ask how far, they mean distance. How far means distance. And if they ask how long, how long means time. Okay, so let us answer these two different questions. Let me start with how far. Okay, how far did Zalika travel in the first hour? Okay, in the first hour. How did Zalika, how far did Zalika travel 
in the first hour, Zarika. So they are talking about Zarika. So let me try to erase all these annotations. Okay. Now let us concentrate on uh, the question. Okay, let us try to concentrate on the question. The question is how far did Zalika travel in the first hour? Okay, Zalika. Zalika is here. This is the journey for Zalika. Zalika. And how far did Zalika travel in the first hour? Okay. So we can say, how do we count hours from here? From 9.00 to 9.30, this is 30 minutes, but they said for the first hour. So from 09, from 9.00 to 9.30, that is 30 minutes. From 9.30 to 10.00 or 10 o'clock, that is completely one hour. So from here, okay, so let me try to label it clearly, okay. From here, uh, one minute. There we go. Okay, so from here, from here to here. See that? That for Zalika is completely one hour. From 900 to 10.00, that for Zalika is one hour. Now the question is, how far how far okay so we need to do what what we want to do is how far did zalika travel in the first hour so what do we need to do is take a ruler take a ruler and try to check closely okay so try to check closely from here let me try to show uh, from here to here is the first one hour the question is how far did Zalika travel in the first one hour? They mean distance. So from here to here is one hour. So stand from here, check, take your ruler, put your ruler all the way up there, put your ruler until you hit the graph of Zalika. And then because they, the, the question is how far? The question is how far? Can you see that? The question is how far? So they need distance. So from, from here to here is one hour, then check the distance. Uh, where the one hour is ending check the distance come and read this distance here can you see that that number is your answer so you do this is the starting point over here was zero so from here all the way up zalika for the first one hour zalika has gone zalika has gone 20 kilometers okay so here this is zalika from here to here, that is one hour. So how far is 20 kilometers? Okay, so go ahead filling here, the distance, the distance. Okay, how far did Zalika travel in the first hour? We say the distance. Okay, let me try to change that. All right, so uh, here we go. Right, so we say, how far? So we say the distance, the distance travel in the first hour, the distance, the distance traveled. How far did? So the distance traveled, the distance traveled by Zalika. How far did Zalika travel in the first hour? So the distance traveled by Zalika was was 20 kilometers in the first hour so in in the first in the first hour you see that in the first hour right so uh that that question is done like so so go ahead with this is a a is done b is done c how long was tanesha cycling how long was Tanesha cycling before she caught, before she caught up with Zalika? How long? Okay, uh, at this point here, okay, at, at this point here, let me try to show you clearly. At this point here, 
this is the point where this is the point where this is where the point where Tanesha at this point of can you see this point this is the point where Tanesha was caught by Zalika okay let me go back to the question how long was Tanesha cycling how long was Tanesha cycling before she caught up with Zalika see that See that at this point here, at this point here is where Tanesha was caught by Zalika. Now the question is for how long? Mm -hmm. For how long was Tanesha cycling before she caught up with Zalika? Okay, so we say Tanesha cycled. Let me try to show you clearly. Let me try to show you clearly. So there we go. How long was Tanisha cycle before she caught up with Zalika? So let us now move that uh, the question is talking about Tanisha. Okay. Tanisha started somewhere here. Let me try to move this point here. Tanisha started somewhere here. This is the starting point of Tanisha. You see that? You notice that? Tanisha started at 9 feet. Tanisha started at that time. Okay. And the point where Tanesha was caught by Zalika is at this point of intersection here. Now the question is, how long was Tanesha cycling before she caught up with Zalika? Okay, so from 9.30 to 10.30, that is equivalent to one hour. From 9.30 to 10.30, because at this point, at this point here is where Tanesha was caught by Zalika. At this point here, let me try to show that. At this point here, can you see this point? At this point here is where Tanesha, Tanesha was caught by Zalika. Now the question is, how long was Tanesha cycling before she caught up with Zalika? So Tanesha was, I mean, Tanesha cycled for one hour. You can see from 9.30 to 10.30. From here, all the way up there. So it is, if you take from 9.30 to 10.30, that's time equivalent to one hour. So we say, how long was Tanisha cycling before she got caught by Zalika? So we say here, Tanisha, how long was Tanisha cycled, cycled an hour, cycled one hour, cycled one hour before she got caught, before, before she got caught, okay? Before she got caught, all right? So you conclude like that. Tanisha cycled, Tanisha cycled one hour before she got caught, all right? Right, I guess uh, we can stop here and then tomorrow I will proceed with question number two and finish up with question number three and then we call homework number two done. All right, so you can stay tuned for the second video, which will be, I mean, for the third video, which will be the, the continuation of this homework number, homework number three. Right, so for now, let us stop here. And we're gonna proceed inshallah next time. All right. So bye bye for now. Stay safe. Bye.